Hey everyone, Bill Blanchin here, and in today's video, I am pleased to announce the release of a new script for the PixInsight software called Solar Toolbox. Now, if you're into solar imaging or you want to get into solar imaging, this script is dedicated to you. Now, many of you may not know this, but I love to image the sun. So over the past couple of years, I've developed uh, some pixel mask scripts that I've used to help me process images of the sun. Now, as you know from previous videos, I've been working with Mike Cranfield on turning some of these pixel math projects that I have into actual scripts for PixInsight software. So last summer, I reached out to Mike and I asked him if he would help me on this project. So for the past eight months, we've been working on this script and we are finally ready for release. Hey guys, Future Bill here, and this is actually going to be the uh, second interruption during this video of a Future Bill. Um, this is the uh, Future Bill of today, the day that I'm releasing this video. And the, one of the reasons why I am doing this uh, interruption is to let you know that I actually made this uh, video over a week ago, and it was during a time where uh, I'm in the process of selling my home. And uh, so I was actually rushed when I put this video out, but uh, I wanted to make sure that there was a lot of information in this video. This video is long, just, just warning you. Um, but, you know, I, I actually thought about putting this in like a, maybe a, like a three part series, um, but I decided not to. And one of the reasons why is because if you really are wanting to get into solar imaging or solar image processing, I do recommend watching the full length of the video, just, you know, make time for it or just watch it in segments. Um, but I wanted to keep it together. That way you can always have, you know, one source to reference. And the next uh, interruption that's going to be coming after this one is just uh, going to be some other things that I needed to bring up, um, which that was actually filmed uh, about a week ago as well. But um, anyways, uh, sorry for the length of the, uh, the video, but I do encourage you guys to watch all of it if you do want to get into solar image processing. And also, one thing I forgot to mention, I do think it's best that uh, if you're going to process a solar image, make sure it's uh, at least 16-bit or higher. Um, anytime you process 8-bit uh, uh, data, you know, um, it, it's your, the dynamic range just isn't there. Uh, so um, there are ways even in PixInsight where you can actually convert from, say, 8-bit to 16-bit. But uh, I do recommend that if you guys are going to process uh, data that it's at least 16-bit. I also want to bring up one more thing. If you are into solar astronomy or you want to get into solar astronomy, I do highly recommend uh, this book right here. It's called uh, Solar Astronomy, and it's uh, a, a group of guys who've been doing imaging for a very long time uh, came together and they produced this book. Um, uh, the main guy, uh, Christian Belodich, is uh, he's actually become a friend of mine. He uh, has helped me uh, through a lot of different things, and uh, he actually provided some images that I'm going to uh, show in this video. Um, but anyways, uh, I highly recommend this book. Uh, in the uh, description below is a link where you can buy this book. And uh, yeah, if you can buy it, learn something, and even help these guys out, um, yeah, th that would be awesome. But uh, I highly recommend this book. So anyways, uh, back to the video. So to quickly give you a rundown of what I've developed, uh, my initial pixel mask scripts were... Uh, there was actually a few processes. One, I had a script for colorizing the sun. Um, basically, when we image the sun, especially if you're into uh, HA or, or even calcium type uh, imaging using a cork, um, you know, we're typically using mono cameras. So I wanted a way of kind of colorizing the sun to give it more of a, a natural look. Um, some of the other things that I did was uh, contrast enhancement, uh, sharpening. So one of the things I did was I came up with my own sharpening algorithm, which is a very similar algorithm to one of my contrast uh, features that's in this script. And I wanted to be able to increase either contrast or sharpening without clipping the data. So another thing I wanted to do is uh, for people who process using whether you're using a cork or an etlion where you're uh, trying to image prominences and things like that, or you got an image that's got the solar surface and prominences in the, uh, the background, I wanted a way to boost the prominences while keeping the sun uh, in the same phase. Now, I know a lot of people, and there's actually nothing wrong with this because some of these images look fantastic, but one of the current um, methods of uh, processing a solar image is 
uh, taking an image and doing some radical curve stretches where you can actually, uh, I've seen people uh, invert the image initially and then use some really crazy curve stretches to show off the prominences. But one of the negative sides of that is you're actually changing the phase of the solar surface. So um, it's, it's more of a negative. So the prominences are in phase while the solar surface is out of phase. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, some of these images look really good, but I wanted a way to where we can actually keep everything in the same phase. So I've developed a feature called Prominence Boost, and through the course of this demo, you're gonna see exactly what it does. But I've come up with an algorithm that actually allows us to keep the solar surface in the same phase as the prominences while showing off that detail. And another cool feature about this script is in the event that you didn't wanna use uh, some of these features, the script has been modulized, so you can actually turn certain things on or off. So even if you still want to process data like using curve stretches or say you're uh, still using software like uh, IMPPG for uh, deconvolution and also curves, if you wanted to still use that data and just colorize it, you can do that. And again, during the course of this video, I'll kind of explain everything and I'll show you the different type of uh, data types that we're allowed to uh, process with this script. But before I go any further, I would like to say thanks to everyone out there who watched this channel, who have subscribed to this channel, and especially for the people who has supported this channel. Uh, we have a buy a coffee campaign and it's done really good. And, uh, you know, again, this script has taken a long time. And there's been times uh, during the past eight months where we both just, you know, we wanted to quit. It's been really stressful because what we're trying to do, it's actually very difficult. The, the uh, processing the sun, it, it's not an easy thing to do, especially the things that we're doing with the, uh, the, uh, the prominence boosting. And uh, again, I'll show you that as we go. But I wanted to give you the ability to, um, if you don't spend a lot of money on solar imaging, you can still produce um, some really cool uh, detailed images. And um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna show you. But again, I'd like to say thanks to Mike Cranfield for helping me put these pixel mask scripts into an actual script. Uh, you were a big help uh, to me in this uh, project, and I know it's been a, a, a very challenging time uh, making all these things work. And thankfully for your input, uh, we made this thing even better. So again, thanks, Mike, for everything that you've done. And uh, yeah, so now it's time to get the script installed. So in the description below is a repository link in which we're going to copy and paste and then we're going to put it into PixInsight to install this script. So here's the description, right here is the repository link. So we're just going to click on this. It's going to open the site. Don't worry about this error at the time I filmed this video. Um, it's showing up here, but we're just going to uh, highlight this. We're going to hit Control C or if you have a Mac, um, Command C uh, to copy it. So that's been copied. And now we're going to go into uh, PixInsight, Resources, Updates, Manage Repositories. We're going to hit Add, Control V or Command V to paste, hit OK, hit OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to restart PixInsight software so it can install. And I want to address something because I know it's popped up in comments in the past on um, people installing uh, these scripts and them not showing up uh, under either scripts or processes. Um, this is an issue, I believe, with uh, the PixInsight software itself. For some reason, when you do install a script, it may not show up. And in the event that that ever happens, all you got to do is go to Resources Updates and just hit uh, Reset Updates. And it's just going to refresh everything so that when you restart PixInsight, everything that, uh, that you selected to install should be there. So for right now, let me uh, restart PixInsight and then I will show you the Solar Toolbox script. All right, so now that PixInsight has restarted, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Processes, All Processes, and down here you're gonna see an icon for Solar Toolbox. We're gonna click on it. And as you can see, this is the uh, display that we have here. Um, basically what I'd like to do is kind of run down just the basics of the script. Uh, as you can see, we've got these uh, drop-down menus. Uh, each one of them is collapsible. And the reason why we did that is because if you're running all of these open, you know, it'll fill up your uh, fill the view uh, really fast. So um, we give the option to, uh, to minimize these, but these are all the, uh, the different features that we have in the software for processing data. Now, the first thing that I want to go over is uh, this uh, image type. 
So basically, we've got three different categories of image, uh, image types. Uh, we've got one called uh, surface only, we've got one called surface and prominence, and we've got one called prominence only. Uh, these three uh, image types, they do different things in the software. Um, some will turn on and off features, and some um, will actually do some internal masking. Uh, and I'll kind of explain that um, through the course of this video. But uh, to start this video, I'm going to kind of go over these uh, image types. So that way you have an understanding of uh, what I mean when I uh, talk about this. So, so surface only would be an image like this. Uh, this is just the uh, solar surface itself. No space in the background or, or anything. And uh, the next mode is going to be surface prominence. So that type of data would be this. Uh, this will be the uh, solar surface right here, and uh, you'll have space in the background, and then we've got uh, some prominence uh, uh, in the background right here. And the last is prominence only. Now this type of data is uh, prominence only data. Now, typically when you're you know, imaging like with, uh, with a Daystar quark, for example, um, they actually sell, uh, you know, a chromosphere model or a prominence model. Um, a lot of people who just buy their prominence model, they just increase their exposure time or their gain to where the solar surface is saturated so that you can start seeing these, uh, the prominence details. And, um, or, you know, if you're using a Daystar prominence filter, you're basically doing the same thing. But typically this uh, solar surface, uh, you, you you push it to the edge to where it's clipped, you know, or, or everything is, you know, completely saturated. Uh, but the solar, uh, the prominence areas, you know, you don't want clipped. But this is the type of data um, that we're going to be processing. And, and there's certain features when we get to that part of this uh, demonstration. But uh, this type of data, we just treat it a little bit different. And you'll kind of understand why uh, through the course of this uh, demonstration. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to pull in some surface only data. And uh, I'll give you a brief example of how we process that. And then we'll continue to the other modes. Now, this is some data from a gentleman named Detlef Schmidt. And I saw he had a video on the Astro Imaging channel back on November 27th, uh, 2022, where he's actually going over solar image processing. And this is actually a really good video. I highly suggest watching it. Um, in fact, uh, this is him right here. He actually designed his own solar telescope. Um, you don't have to design your own uh, solar telescope, but uh, this, you know, he really loves solar imaging. And uh, what he did here was fantastic. But anyways, this video, uh, he's going over different types of data sets that he's uh, done. And down here in the description, you can uh, actually go to his Astro Bin page. Um, his Astro Bin name is uh, DWS23, and he's got some fantastic uh, images shot with this telescope. And also his, uh, the filter that he uses is uh, really high quality. You can see some of the time lapses that he's done here. And again, when I go through this, uh, this demonstration, you're going to see how you can actually use an image container uh, in PixInsight to help create these uh, automated time lapses uh, using our script. But this is something that he did, and it's fantastic. And he was using a, a solar spectrum uh, 0.3 uh, Anstrom, um, really high quality uh, filter, HA filter, and you can just see the, the, you know, the amount of detail. But I, uh, after watching him on the Astro Imaging channel, I reached out to him and, you know, we've been friends and this is, it's really cool that he provided some data and I'm going to show you some data that he, uh, that he provided and uh, some time lapses that I, that I was able to make out of some of his data. But, but this is your typical surface only data, right? So what we're going to do, we're just going to go into surface only mode. And the first settings that you see here is a black point, white point. So what we're going to do, and especially with uh, uh, hydrogen alpha data, the uh, contrast is, uh, um, especially on uh, lesser uh, quality, uh, you know, quark systems, your contrast is going to be a lot less. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand the data to a, a near uh, min-max uh, pixel values. So we got little shortcut keys over here. So if I were to click this uh, key here, uh, you can see that this value changed. Now you can't see any changes yet, uh, and that's because I didn't open the, um, so let me, uh, I'm gonna reset this. And this is the uh, real-time preview, so you can see everything uh, happening at once. 
So by clicking this is we're actually gonna to go to the minimum pixel value uh, within the image. This is just a quick tool to get us close. If we don't wanna clip, you know, we can just drop this down just a, a little bit so we're not clipping our data. We can also do the same thing with a white point. Now, in this particular image here, the white point is, it's this image actually, um, because there was like some flaring there, uh, it, it actually got very bright. Um, so um, there is some uh, clipping going on here, but that's okay. So not much was done here on the white point. If we actually want to do uh, make it clip some more, you can see that we're we're clipping here. But uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. We'll just uh, we'll keep it at say a value of one. Now this next setting, this is the prominence boost, and this uh, even if you enable this feature right here, it's uh, it's still grayed out, and this is because in surface only mode, there's you know we're not doing any boosting here, so this feature is not used in surface only. Contrast enhancement. So here uh, we've got two different methods. We've got uh, local histogram equalization. And this is actually a very um, good way of increasing contrast. And you do have to be careful with uh, using this. This is uh, very similar to the uh, histogram equalization that's already in uh, PixInsight. But what we've done here is we've brought it in and uh, it, it's a feature to increase this, uh, this contrast. Now, uh, this image alone has really good contrast, but for the sake of this demonstration, we'll, uh, we're gonna end up turning it on. Um, but we, we got this option and we also have the option of local contrast. It's just a different way of increasing um, contrast. Both have their benefits. I'll kind of go over uh, some of that stuff uh, with some of these different uh, data sets uh, throughout this video. But for right now, what we can do is we can turn on a uh, histogram equalization. So uh, right now, the, the defaults are uh, these values here. Now this comes in really strong. I would probably not uh, run it this high, but basically what uh, histogram equalization is, um, if you're familiar with a histogram where, uh, whether you're using like Photoshop or even PixInsight, where you're creating like an S curve to help uh, create uh, more contrast, think about uh, multiple histograms, uh, multiple segments throughout this image in which we're able to do that. So the advantage of that is, is in areas that have varying uh, lighting conditions, you know, so like if you've got a, a really big picture of the sun, you know, and, uh, you know, it gets darker towards the edges, uh, we're still able to increase, um, you know, contrast in darker areas and in uh, uh, lighter areas. And uh, the way we do this is uh, by controlling this uh, kernel radius feature, this will kind of dictate um, how much of the dark areas we want to make darker and uh, the lighter areas. So if we were to like drop this down to say uh, 100 as an example, you can see in this particular image here, some of these darker areas actually uh, pulled uh, a little bit darker. The uh, If you highlight over the controls themselves, it does have a footnote kind of giving you a brief explanation of what this does. But uh, the best thing to do is just kind of go through these settings uh, individually and that'll kind of give you an idea of, of what you're going to get uh, these, you know, this, these uh, contrast boosts that, that you want. But if you wanted to see the before and after of uh, with contrast boost on and off, so you can see this area here, you know, whereas it's, you know, it kind of washes in, there's not a lot of contrast there. Now we've created uh, that, uh, you know, more separation. Contrast limit, these are, uh, this is just another setting that's gonna control your contrast. So for example, if I was to really increase this, you know, higher, you know, the contrast itself actually uh, gets greater. And, um, you know, you can really destroy an image really fast uh, if you go too crazy with contrast. Uh, but uh, here you can actually drop this down to say uh, 2.5 where it's not so, uh, dramatic and then you got the amount um, again uh, every control has a footnote but uh, this is just a percentage uh, I believe it's just a blending per, uh, percentage with the original data um, but if you uh, wanted to increase this you can see that the contrast uh, got a little bit better so sometimes you can actually decrease the contrast limit itself and then increase the amount and if you didn't want to use histogram equalization, you can also use local contrast. And again, this is just a different way of doing it. Local contrast is basically like unsharp mask with a very big um, low pass filter. 
So if we wanted to increase uh, contrast here, you can just uh, increase it, uh, increase this value right here. But this would be the before, and this would be the after. And uh, it, it works really well. Um, it's just, uh, it really is a matter of uh, your, li uh, your taste, your liking, how you wanna do this. But uh, for this example, I'll just uh, keep with uh, histogram equalization. And um, we also have masking. I will get to that part when we do the, uh, the next segment um, on the uh, surface and prominence, because once you see that, you're gonna, your, your brains are gonna start taking because we, we can do some really cool things with that. So for right now, I'll just collapse that because this is the contrast that we wanna go with. And now this is the segment of colorization. So the minute that I click on this, it's going to colorize this image. So if you're dealing with mono data, it's going to colorize that mono data. If you happen to bring in one shot color data, what we're doing is we're taking the, the luminance of that uh, one shot color and then colorizing that. So if your data is color, um, you know, you may not need, obviously you don't need to colorize it. You can leave it alone. Or if you uh, do want to use this color segment, we're, we're just colorizing the luminance from that uh, uh, one shot color data. So if I turn this on, you can see that it actually colorized this data. Now, before I get into these segments uh, here, we got a red, green, and blue. So these are actually mid-tone uh, curves. So I decided to go the mid-tone curve route because one of the things I like about uh, mid-tones is anything that is saturated or clipped, it'll remain white. And because I really like how solar images, especially when you have flaring and it'll, you know, when it gets to the point where it clips these white areas, um, they, they show up really, really cool. And you can actually see that in uh, Detlef's uh, images here where these, you know, super bright areas are just, I think it's just cool how it kind of comes in and out. I did look at uh, working in a d a different color spaces like a, a HSV, but um, areas that were like uh, clipped or, or, or really bright, they, they kind of just stayed yellow. I, I really like the contrast in color. This gives it more of a kind of a fiery look. Um, just with these default settings, but in the event that you wanted to change the, uh, you know, the colors, um, all you got to do is just play around with these these um, controls right here, and uh, that'll get you, you know, the uh, you know the color that you like. Uh, for right now, we'll just kind of run with these settings. So this stretch feature right here, this is basically another curve stretch. So if you wanted to make the image brighter. Uh, you can do a curve stretch here. Here we got a contrast boost. So this is a different type of contrast adjustment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crank this up to maybe 250. And you can see that the uh, color contrast changed. So what we're doing is just we're creating more space in, uh, in, you know, in the colors themselves. So the colors actually have more contrast. Uh, they're, you know, the, the, they just pop a little bit more. Um, but uh, this is another type of adjustment that you can do here. I typically run a value of 0 0.2, 0 0.25. We also have another uh, contrast feature here. This is called highlight contrast. What this will do is this will just increase the contrast of the highlights only. Um, there's certain data that I use this on and I just, I wanted to add this feature just to have it in there. But if I do increase it, you can see that the highlights themselves got a little bit brighter. Uh, for this example, I'll just keep it off. Uh, brightness, um, I'll explain that when we get into uh, prominence mode. This is just a, a clipping feature, and uh, yeah, I'll show you in a prominence mode. And the cool thing about this is, is uh, if, whenever you adjust these colors, you can create your own color profile. So we have two color profiles already in here. Uh, one we just called Calcium K and uh, one HA. Um, I know a lot of guys like to um, colorize their solar images based on the, the wavelength in which uh, they're imaging the sun with. And uh, for example, like, and this is a bad example because this is not uh, calcium K data, but if I was to hit uh, calcium K and hit load, you can kind of see it gives uh, that type of uh, color profile. Um, but this is something that you can uh, change yourself and uh, and whatever thing that uh, anything that you want to use, it's it's all up to you. But if you wanted to create your own profile, like I will call this test, you just hit save, and then you can see that it, it saved it here. And if we want to delete it, you can uh, delete it uh, here. 
So for right now, we'll just keep the uh, HA settings as is, and uh, and yeah. So just to show you on the real-time preview, this is what the image looked like before. This is what it looks like after. This next segment is sharpening. And again, just like the uh, local contrast, uh, the sharpening is an algorithm that I come up with and which we can actually sharpen an image and, and not clip. Um, and this sharpening actually works really well. And towards the end of this video, I do have like a little bonus thing because it's you can use a sharpening for, for other things. And uh, um, I'll put a timestamp here and you can take a look at it uh, towards the end of this video, but it's, it's really cool. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on and uh, no sharpening's happening yet. So there's two controls for sharpening, sharpening kernel and sharpening boost. The sharpening boost is actually going to control how much sharpening that you want. The kernel is what's going to control the low pass filter, uh, which we're using to help sharpen the image. So typically really high resolution uh, images are going to require a, uh, a higher uh, kernel value. But for right now, we're going to start off with one and we're going to increase the boost. Let me just bring it up to uh, 30 just to, to to show you here. So as you can see, the image actually just got sharper, right? So this is before and after. So it's not too much, but it's just enough to bring the detail in without going too crazy. If I wanted to go too crazy, you know, I'll crank it up to like 70. And you see, it actually got, you know, really sharp. And if I was to start increasing the kernel value, you know, then you're going to really start uh, hurting your image. So you definitely want to be careful with this. You can actually even bring this up to two and maybe bring this down to, say, a 10. Uh, but we want to focus on getting that, you know, that higher detail. So I'm going to keep it at one and I'm going to maybe uh, keep it at 40. Let's just try to bring it up at 50. Why not? Yeah, so that's it's really nice and it doesn't really hurt that image. So I do have a denoising. This is not like a typical denoising that you would see in, in other uh, platforms. Um, this is just a high frequency denoise. And again, we have a kernel size. You typically want this kernel size around the same as what you're uh, using here on your sharpening. Uh, the denoising amount, again, this is uh, a blending of just the high frequency noise itself. And uh, if, if your image is uh, really grainy, uh, you're probably going to want to increase this uh, up higher. Typically, I just run a value of 0.25, but you can play with this. If you want to uh, zoom in on your real-time preview, you can zoom in here. And you can see that uh, we do have a little bit of noise. And if I were to you know, increase this uh, to a higher value, you can see uh, we got some denoising happening here. And, uh, you know, and if it's too much, you can just bring that down. So for this particular image, I'll just run it at like a like a 0.5. And that's pretty much it. Uh, sharpening, we have a masking thing. Again, that's going to be on this uh, prominence feature thing here. Um, but if you like this image the way it is, all you need to do is just hit this uh, square button and uh, it's going to process uh, uh, the image. You can also, uh, if you already have an image open, you can even just drag this arrow here on top of this uh, image. That'll process it. You can also just bring this over and you can name this however you want. You can save it as, you know, Solar Toolbox. If you uh, uh, have a whole bunch of processing things that uh, you typically save and recall, um, you can you can do that. Um, you know, you can just drop this on here and it's also going to process it. So uh, for, for this example, you can see that it uh, processed this data. So this is the before and this is the after. Okay. And it's got that fiery look. Yeah, I probably didn't have to put so much contrast or sharpening, but for the sake of uh, this being on YouTube, I just wanted to show these changes. But yeah, you, you do have the uh, the ability, you know, with your real time preview to make these uh, changes on the fly. If you didn't want so much sharpening, if you wanted to try a different uh, contrast method, you know, you can do that. This would be the before. And this would be the after if you were to use, uh, say, local contrast. But I really like that that, you know, that fiery detail 
the script actually uh, produces, you know, of the sun. And uh, so, yeah, so I'll close the uh, real time preview down. You know, I can just uh, drag this over and this is what our final image would look like. Um, I, I want to show you some uh, quick examples of some data that uh, some surface only data that I've, I've done. All right, here's some uh, data right here. This is some data from Christian, and uh, this is what the before looks like, and this is what the after looks like. So you can see all this this detail in this image. It's uh it's uh, pretty cool looking, but uh, yeah, before, after, and if uh, say you didn't want to colorize it, I mean that's what it looks like with uh, the expanded contrast before, after. Here is another surface image, and if you can see, I mean, a lot of this uh, fiery detail of the sun, it, uh, yeah, it really comes out. So I thought this was really cool, all these different uh, solar features here. Now here's another image I wanted to show you, because this is another image from uh, Christian, and uh, it's really cool what this script can do. So uh, I already kind of have the settings uh, preset, but I'm going to open up the real-time preview. And if you look, the with the contrast and you know the, the settings here of black points and the white points and then also sharpening, this is the before and this is the after. And if we look in, I'm going to zoom in just to show you how much detail i mean it is it is just amazing and you know you can actually i mean if we wanted to bring up the contrast even more we can uh do more enhancement but um if i uh, go back out you know it, you know you can really start pulling out these uh you know this this granular uh surface detail and it's uh it's pretty amazing and if I wanted to colorize it, you know, I can colorize it. And then I can add a little bit more color contrast to that. And, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what it would look like before and after. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, a, that's another pretty cool uh, image that you can uh, do with the script. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some surface prominence data. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my real-time preview and I got to go to surface prominence mode. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is this uh, solar rim feature. This is actually a very important part of uh, this process. And if you're in surface mode, this is not enabled, but in this mode it is. And this is going to help us create these uh, these masks and uh, and handle some of the math that we're doing to create these boosts. So the first thing that we got to do is we got to set our uh, solar rim value. Now, if I highlight over uh, this area here, this is pretty much the this is the the rim, the like the visible rim of the solar surface, and it's coming in around a uh, 0.27. Um, we're always going to be looking at the the numbers that are on the uh, left hand side. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in a value of 0.27. Now, what I can do is th there's some prominences here and I got my black points here. Now I could just uh, set my uh, black point value here, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at my numbers and I think this, we'll start off with this value here and I'll, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, white point, this is gonna be way too much. It's gonna make this really bright, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. So that way we're, uh, we've got a little bit of room before uh, we're clipping. This is uh, the part where we're going to uh, create the boost. We're gonna start boosting this area here. So if I start increasing this value here, you can see that the prominence areas uh, just got brighter. So I'm gonna go up even higher. And now you can start to see uh, these areas showing up even more. So I'm gonna crank this up to, let's go to 0.9, see what it looks like. Yeah. So now we're really stretching it, and every part of this image, even these little faint areas, are starting to to, uh, to show up here. Now this is the point where, if we can kind of get an idea of where our black point is, uh, and this is that point where we can maybe, you know, just get to uh, where we're not clipping uh, useful data. 
Yeah, like right there. Okay, so we're going to run with this uh, this 3D feature. I'll show you here in a minute. I'm also going to show you this uh, invert feature. I should have showed you on the uh, the surface thing. Um, again, I'm not really a big fan of uh, having any data that's inverted, um, but I'll explain why I put it in here. So yeah, so this is the image here. So before prominence boost and after prominence boost. Okay. Uh, contrast enhancement. Now, this is a kind of a cool thing. Now, one thing about local histogram equalization is if I was to turn this on right now, you can see that it's also going to make all these very faint areas uh, uh, even brighter. But it also changes the uh, contrast of these high, uh, of the areas and the prominences. So what I've done here is down here I've got a mask. So right now we have no mask. So what I'm going to do is I can go to surface and prominence mask. So what this is going to do, this is going to perform the uh, histogram equalization only on the prominences and the solar surface, not space. But we can view the mask just so we can uh, refine it a little bit. So here's the mask right here. And what I can do is I can bring up my shadows a little bit so we're not getting th these areas here. So I don't want to bring in... Uh, so much of the uh, you know the areas of space or the areas in which we might be getting uh, uh, maybe some even lens artifacts uh, you know from the image, and we also have the ability to blur uh, the mask slightly so that the transition is just a little bit smoother. So if I turn the mask off, you can see that the contrast enhancements were done to the surface and just the prominences, uh, but not space. So if I turn contrast off and then on, you can see that these areas uh, didn't really get affected. Now, depending on what kind of look you're going for, um, I typically really only do uh, contrast enhancement on the solar surface um, and not the prominence. So what I could do is I can go down here and go to surface only. So let me turn the mask back on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go surface only. So as you can see, we just uh, we're only uh, masking in the areas on the solar surface and not the prominences. So only contrast boost is going to be performed on the solar surface. So if I turn the mask off, you can see that I did the contrast enhancements right here on the solar surface, but not the prominences. So again, you have all these different options where you can do contrast enhancement on everything or just the solar surface and the prominences, or just the solar surface. Now, for colorization, I'm not going to go through this in detail again because I already did, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on, and I'll add some uh, color uh, boost. Yeah, and uh, what I can do now is uh, turn on sharpening and just turn up the boost to maybe say 25, 20, or 26. And you can see it got a little bit sharper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just crank it up a little bit higher. And I'm gonna do this uh, for, uh, for this example. And it may be hard to see the, uh, the sharpening happening uh, on YouTube, but it did definitely get sharper. So this is before and after. Now, depending on the size of your image and the resolution, the uh, there will be a delay because we're processing everything in real time. So if you look down here, we have the same type of masking that we do in contrast enhancement, but for sharpening, because I don't want to sharpen areas in space. In fact, I don't, you know, even the faint signal here, uh, sharpening has a tendency to almost like uh, uh, ball up the uh, areas of signal and it can make an image look bad. So. What I can do is I can just uh, sharpen the surface and prominence only area, and I'll turn on that mask. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit so we're not getting this area here. We only wanna get these areas here. And uh, you know I can uh, give it a slight blur. And what I'll do is I'll turn the mask off 
and you can see everything. So the prominences and the uh, solar surface were sharpened, uh, but not any of the, uh, you know, the, the very low signal areas. And so this is just a really quick way to go from this to this, okay? So one thing that I'll show you real fast, and I, I need to go through some uh, other data because I know this video is gonna start getting long. In fact, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna show you some examples. I'm just going to make a clone of this, drag this over, and uh, that way you can kind of get a, a, a feel for uh, what that looked like, right? So I'm gonna click back on here, because one thing I wanna show you is this 3D feature. Now, essentially what we're doing is for us to boost the prominences, Im imagine a cross-sectional view of the sun where, you know, and the sun's gonna dome over into uh, darkness, you know? So from here we got signal, but over here, you know, it gets really dark. We're essentially, um, you know, uh, unfolding all those faint areas of the sun in order to uh, expose them. All these very faint areas here have just been stretched. And again, this is a, an algorithm that we're running. And uh, yeah, it works really well. But it, it, you can also, and I'll show you some full disk images here in a minute. But what can also happen is, is it, it'll turn your solar surface into more of a flat view. So what we've got here is we got this feature called 3D uh, effect. And what this is going to do is this is going to take the, the original image and it's going to blend it in with this image so that we can keep the bright areas of the prominence uh, while keeping that the original uh, image of, of the sun so it doesn't look so uh, flat. We can give it back some uh, contour. So for example, I'm gonna bring this up to about uh, 50%. And as you can see, uh, we got our blending. This is like the original curvature of the sun uh, with these, air, these boosted areas of the prominences. So, this is again keeping everything in phase okay so this is you know the exact uh image of what the sun looks like but we've got these uh, boosted prominences so before and then after and if you want the uh 3d effect even uh more uh dramatic that curve is going to get really strong it, it's and you can see where it's it basically masks in the prominences uh, while keeping that original uh, curvature. So we, we still have that, uh, you know, that the original curvature view, um, but we're, we're just masking in the, the boosted prominences. Now, one thing that I do want to show you is this invert thing. So I know a lot of people do like to do the, you know, have that inverted look uh, with the solar surface. Um, I did add it in here. I wasn't a big fan of it, but I went ahead and did it anyways. Um, and if you decide to use it, it's up to you. But again, the, the, the point of me uh, coming up with this, uh, this math was to boost and keep everything in phase. Now, if I was to click invert, I'm gonna turn the 3D effect off. Now, you, you have that inverted feel, right? And because the image was so much brighter, um, now it's so much, or now the surface here is so much darker because that's inverted. But we're still bringing in this, uh, this detail here. So one thing that you can do is you can come down to stretch. And if I wanted to make this uh, the whole image brighter, and I only really use the stretch feature when uh, this is inverted, but I can brighten this back up. And of course, you know, we're also boosting this. And I actually uh, pulled this up a little bit too high. But what I could do is I could bring this back down to uh, 0.5 and I'll bring in, uh, and I'll crank the, uh, the 3D effect and I'll, I'll just crank it all the way up. So uh, this is kind of, it's very similar to the, the manual uh, curve stretch uh, way of doing it. Um, the, uh, the blending is happening here. And uh, when you're inverted, you can actually control this line, this, this uh, blend line, just by adjusting your, uh, your solar rim. Like if I was to bring it down maybe just a little bit, uh, it's gonna maybe uh, uh, bring this back down or, or closer to the edge. And then, you know, I can come in here and, and change the stretch, make this brighter. But if you do kind of like that, uh, you know, that inverted look here while keeping uh, your prominences uh, the same, you can do that. 
you know, if, if you look at the original image here, everything is in phase. But I wanted to give you guys that option, and, uh, and that's kind of what it looks like. So that's basically what the surface prominence uh, mode does. And um, what I'd like to do now is uh, show you some other images real fast. Uh, that way you can get a, an idea of, you know, what this thing can do. All right, so here's an image that I got from uh, Detlef. Um, this is uh, some pretty good data. This is what it looks like before, and this is what it looks like after. Here's another image. This is the before, and this is the after. Uh, this is another image provided by uh, Detlef, and uh, yeah, this is uh, really cool how some of this uh, detail right here in the sun uh, came out. I do want to show you this image here, though, uh, because uh, as mentioned earlier, you know, in this book, this is the image that's on the cover. Uh, but this is the before. And this is after. And I did push this a little hard. I, you know, the contrast uh, is, is quite high, but I wanted to pull out as much of this low level detail as possible. And it almost has like a like a glowing effect. You know, I don't know. I like this image. And uh, again, this is uh, from Christian, and it's the same image that's on his book. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, this is data that was uh, sent to me by a fellow Astronomy Club member, uh, Sonny Manley. And uh, he uh, filmed this actually on uh, Christmas Day. There was a huge, like, uh, prominence, like, it's a, an eruption, and uh, he, we actually, he actually took a bunch of images of this and I was able to make a, a time lapse of it. But um, here you can see this, uh, this prominence coming up, but this is what it looks like when it's, uh, you know, after it's been boosted. And you, all this uh, faint detail here, you know, the before and after. I mean, all this uh, detail right here, you can see coming up before and after. So this has uh, been colorized, but it's also been boosted, and you can really start to see this, uh, all this faint detail. Now there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how you can actually use uh, process containers and image containers uh, to create a time-lapse image. Uh, the fact that you can actually uh, use uh, this script right here, uh, you can once you got your settings set, you can drop it into either a, you know a, a process container and use it in conjunction with an image container. Then you can actually create, uh, you can make those changes to a full set of images and create a time lapse. I'm not going to uh, get into how to create a time lapse uh, in this video. There's, like I said, there's plenty of videos out on YouTube on how to do it. It might be something that, um, that I might do, uh, but for right now, um, I do want to show you a couple of time lapses that I made uh, using the script. And what I'd like to do is process another image. This is going to be a full disk image. Uh, this image was actually provided to me by uh, Dave's Astrophotography. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, he's a great guy. He does a lot of uh, deep space uh, photography and also solar photography. In the description below is a link to his YouTube channel, so uh, please check it out. But this is a full disk image, so I'm going to show you um, how we're going to process this. And one of the reasons why I'm also going to use this image is because I, I definitely want to show you, you know, why we use some of these settings, especially even with the black point. So what I've done here, let me hit reset. I'm going to set everything back to default. And I'm going to go ahead and open the real-time preview. Let me uh, zoom this in so you can see it better. 
And what we're going to do is I got to go to surface prominence mode. And the solar rim, now on a full disk image, you're typically going to want to uh, keep this fairly low. I mean, the edge, the visible edge, it's probably around like uh, 0.2. Uh, let's just start off a little bit lower, around uh, 0.15. And the black point, it's going to be around, we're going to leave it as is uh, after I do the prominence boost. And you're going to see why, because then what we're going to do is we're going to gradually increase it to uh, to get rid of some of this uh, some of the noise that we'll get from it, uh, the white point. If I was to click on it, it's close to one. Uh, I'll just keep it at one. So for prominence boost, let's just crank this up to like I don't know, 0.95. Okay, so you can see we actually boosted all the prominences uh, around the sun, and uh, th this uh, before and after. OK, while keeping everything in the same phase. But you can also see we're getting some of these, uh, you know, some low level noise here. So I'm going to click over here and my black point is around 0 0.007. So I'm going to type in 0 0.007. And you can see we uh, clipped that out, but we still have uh, the prominence data. OK, so. Earlier, I was talking about how the math is kind of like unfolding the surface of the sun. So you can see that the sun itself doesn't really have uh, like that round shape. It still looks good, but it doesn't have that round shape. So using the 3D effect, if I was to crank this all the way up, now you can still see the prominences, but we kept the original uh, shape of the sun, but we're just uh, putting the prominences uh, back on it. It's just a blending technique using a, an internal mask. And I'm going to zoom in here because I'm going to show you something that you might run into. So this is because the solar rim value is a little too low. So we're just going to increase this up a little bit. And we're going to go just a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to back this out. This is the before and this is after, and that's using the uh, 3D effect. So now let's go on a contrast. We're going to turn on the local histogram uh, equalization. And uh, you can see that we brought out uh, quite a bit of contrast here. If we wanted to uh, increase this, let's crank up the amount just a little bit more. And then all this uh, contrast is, is popping out. So I don't want to push this too hard. Uh, I know that we're going to get a little bit of color. Uh, you can tell that there, the uh, tilt adapter was tilted in this direction. You may not see it on YouTube, but you will when I colorize it. Um, I also need to bring this up too. I really do want to keep this video kind of short, even though it's going to be long, because um, I've got so many images I'd like to show you. But uh, local contrast, I actually do prefer local contrast uh, when it comes to full disk images. Uh, there, there'll be some, I'll show you an example after this actually. And um, one of the things that you can get when you're using uh, uh, histogram equalization is you can get like a blotchy look on the sun where uh, areas, you know, certain areas will come in darker, some will come lighter. And uh, you can actually get rid of some of that or reduce some of that effect by maybe taking your blend mode to maybe 50%. That way it's still a little bit of a rounded shape like this, where you're uh, blending in 50% of the original image to that of uh, you know your prom boosted image. But um, this still right here has a little bit of that uh, curvature feeling, um, but you know we can maybe go to 0.75. This particular image here, the uh, equalization actually doesn't look blotchy. So we'll just go with that. And then I will turn on color. And let's give it a little bit of contrast boost in the color. And the next thing that we need to do, and also, again, I could, uh, let me just turn on, let me just see what this looks like. I want to watch this area here because you can actually sometimes not using a mask on uh, histogram equalization. Sometimes it can benefit you, sometimes maybe not. So, for example, like when you really zoom in on this data, uh, if we were to turn on this mask. Now I need to show it first. And in, in the event that I need to adjust it and I don't need to adjust it. 
turn the mask off and leave this on. And I'm going to zoom out. So this is with uh, just uh, using a prominence mask uh, and or a mask on the prominences and the solar surface. This is without. So you can see that some of this uh, brighter area here came back. So I definitely want to use a mask. And this is, again, why we do have this mask option. So we just got we just didn't pull out this uh, information here. But this right here looks really good. I mean, we went from this super kind of low in the contrast range, uh, which is typical of, you know, using like a Daystar cork, uh, depending on what telescope you use. And now we're actually pulling out this detail. So again, last, we're going to turn sharpening on. We'll start off with a kernel one. Let's go up to maybe 30 for a boost. And that right there is way too high. So we're going to bring this down to maybe 15. Yeah, that actually doesn't look too bad. So this is before sharpening, and this is after sharpening. I could probably come down maybe just a little bit more. And in the event that uh, the image is too bright for you, you can actually uh, go up a little bit on your uh, white point. We can actually bring everything down. So. Um, you'll see that now it's it's you know it's not so bad on your eyes uh in this particular case you know i might take it here but uh, this actually came out really good you know these prominences are showing uh quite nicely and uh the sharpening isn't uh too bad with the setting either um so what i'll do i'm gonna make a clone of this and i'm just gonna drag this over and that's what it looks like there. Now I'm going to come back to this image because I'll show you the uh, inverted. And I'm going to turn on the prominence. Now, typically when I do invert, I like to have my 3D effect all the way up. Now, kind of, so you'll, you'll see here in a minute that you can get that inverted look. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of how it looks right here. And with the inverted look, you will have to play around with the solar rim value. So it might actually have to come back down. And let's see on the 3D effect. And then uh, we will stretch it just a little bit. So you can still kind of get that uh, that inverted look, but um, I. Like I said earlier, uh, you know, kind of the purpose of this script is to actually keep everything in phase, but you can you can still get that look. You just got to play around with the settings. Remember, you can change the colors the way you want. And I'll show you another example of another another image that was provided. Uh, this is this one actually the the contrast isn't uh, bad at all. So I will reset my settings. Where so uh, this is another full disk image here. And I'm going to turn on the prominence boost. Now, you're going to see, watch this, when I start cranking up the prominence boost. I'm going to crank this up pretty high, like 0.97. Now you can see all these prominences popping out. And again, the, the surface went from like a, a round sphere shape to that of a, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty flat looking. Uh, but we can actually use the 3D effect. Let's do a blend, maybe uh, around 75% blend. And we will go to histogram equalization. Now you can see here, and of course we're going to have to use uh, the mask, but when you use the histogram equalization, and again, you're going to have to probably mess around with some of these settings uh, to get the uh, you know the values right but you can still get that blotchy look. And you can kind of see it here. You know, uh, actually areas here are a little bit lighter right here, and then these areas are darker. Uh, one, and that's another reason why I added uh, local contrast, because local contrast will actually handle this a lot different. So if I go to local contrast, you'll see that we still have contrast, but it's, uh, it's actually uh, uniform. Right. So I, I really like using local contrast when it comes to uh, full disk 
uh, imaging. And I'll just add a little bit more contrast to this image. That's a little too much, but for YouTube, you guys can probably see it better. And then again, I will colorize it, add a little bit of color contrast. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's our sun. Um, you know, if I wanted to do the whole invert thing, you know, that's what it would look like inverted. Inverted, I would actually just turn my 3D effect all the way up. And uh, let me just uh, turn this back off. And I'll just change the blend mode here. And then I will go ahead and add some sharpening. And I will turn on my sharpening mask. Okay. So this is before. And this is after. And uh, yeah. And if you need to tone it down, you can just tone it down here. But um, for the sake of demonstration, this is uh, what it would look like. So let me show you another image. This is an uh, image. This is actually an Eclipse image that another YouTuber sent me because I was watching his video and this was during the Eclipse. And uh, if you don't know uh, James uh, from DSO Imager, he has an awesome channel. So the link to his channel is in the description below. And let me pull that up. All right, so this is the image that James provided and he actually did a video on this. I think he was using uh, an Antlia uh, I think it's their uh, calcium filter, maybe, but it's a it's a it is a filter you can use. And with the eclipse coming up, it'll actually produce some some pretty good results. So. Uh, so anyways, let me turn on the re real time preview with this type of filter. Um, this is actually like a Herschel wedge uh, type uh, filter that he was using. So, um, I mean, you could just leave it in surface mode, but um, I'm just going to uh, keep it here just to, because it's, you know, does show space and it does show, uh, you know, the solar sur uh, surface here. And uh, there's no point in doing a prominence boost because there's no prominences. Um, you can do it. And if it does help with contrast, uh, you know, you can do it as well. Uh, but for right now, we're, we won't. And I'm going to turn uh, contrast on. And uh, I still have to set a solar rim value. And it's around that edge is around 0.8-ish. And I'm going to set my white point. What I'll do is I'll turn colorization on, add some color boost. Come to sharpening, just add some sharpening. I'll take it to 20. And as you can see here, I'm gonna, I need to back my white point off because I'm getting really bright in these areas here. But when it comes to an eclipse image, now one of the things again with uh, uh, histogram equalization, is it's you know how it looks at all these dark areas and bright areas uh, to, to uh, make the adjustments. So one of the cool things about this prominence boost mode is, you know, by flattening the uh, solar surface, then everything can be equally weighted. So watch this. In fact, uh, when doing this, I actually am going to bring up my my solar rim value just a little bit because you now an eclipse is very difficult to handle the the masks uh, correctly, and you can start getting a, an artifact here. Um, so uh, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, but you can see as you know, just because we, you know, we did boost or make the solar surface a little bit more flat, it actually brought out more contrast, uh, away from the center more, more evenly. And, uh, so you can actually get away with using a, a prominence boost, but you're not using it to boost the prominences. You're just, you know, changing the contour so that the uh, equalization can be done better. And then uh, we can also, uh, we need to set our black point. I forgot to do that earlier. So we can get this area here black. Um, but now these, now the contrast on this image is really popping. So this is where we were before. This is where we are after. Otherwise, if we don't, you know, typically, again, you don't really need to use uh, prominence boost, but what you can do is you can also go into local contrast. And as you can see, you know, 
local contrast works really good because uh, it's it, it's uniform. So for eclipse imaging um, or full disk imaging, you know, I like using local contrast, but I, I kind of wanted to go through some of these things just to show you how you can use a prominence boost to make equalization uh, method work a little bit better for you. Otherwise, you know, you, you don't have to and you can just run, a, you know, local contrast. But um, we'll increase the contrast maybe to 0.7. And uh, this is the before and this is the after uh, using the image that he provided. So this actually came out uh, pretty good. Let me show you another image and then I got to wrap this up so we can go to uh, prominence only mode um, because that's a, a pretty neat uh, feature. Now here's another image. This was provided uh, by Christian. I went ahead and uh, processed this just so uh, to make things quicker. But if you look at the detail, you know, with this image here, I mean, this is the before and after, you know, the sunspots really pop. You can see the granulation uh, really good before and after. Now, here's an image that I want to show you. This is another one from Christian. Now, sometimes when you look at an image like this, it, it looks like it's, uh, you know, almost like uh, overdone. <laughs> but the thing is, is like when you zoom in to this, the amount of detail that this image has, I mean, it, it is awesome. I mean, look at that. I mean, that detail is this. It's fantastic. So let me uh, I need to turn on some sharpening. So let me try taking it up to uh, 20. Yeah. So now all these areas here are really starting to pop. Now with this type of data, like calcium data, I do like to maybe boost the highlights just a little bit. It'll just kind of bring out a little bit more of these, uh, the brighter areas. And I'll go back to a full view. So this is a, the comparison between equalization. And you, I mean, it does bring out a little bit of contrast in the edges, but it's again, gets that blotchy look. So I will just uh, run local contrast. Now, because this is calcium data, uh, some people, again, like to view in maybe that, that around that color spectrum uh, color. So I'll just load that profile. You know, and you can kind of get that, that look. And what I mean by that is, and this is something that James uh, from uh, DSO Imager uh, YouTube channel brought up is uh, it's, it's kind of that look that, you know, that calcium look or a white light look or how you process hydrogen data. You can kind of match it, match that color to that uh, bandwidth. But, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here. Now, obviously, you can tweak these colors, make it however you want. But, you know, when you look at the before, and the after, I mean, you can actually see these prominences, you know, quite well. But uh, yeah, this is some some data that uh, that came out uh, pretty decent. I actually prefer it in in more of that yellow color, though. And I mean, there is when we zoom in, you know, it looks busy, but there's there's a lot of detail here. I mean, this is some really good stuff. But anyways, uh, yeah. I think I need to jump over to the last segment and then I'll probably show you some, you know, some other examples, but I need to uh, get on with uh, this last mode. All right. This last mode is the prominence mode and I got to go to prominence mode. Now you can use the uh, boost function and I will use it here. Now the, uh, the solar rim is going to be a higher value. So you can see it's around uh, 0.8. So I'm going to bring this up to 0.8. There's really no point of rescaling uh, yet. Uh, you can, uh, the value is 0 0.02. So we can type in 0 0.02. And what we'll do is we can add some boost just to pick up some of this detail out here a little bit better. And you can see it here. Now it's starting to, to really pop. And uh, contrast, I'm not going to do a contrast enhancement on this. Uh, for color, same thing. I'm going to turn this on. Now, one thing that you notice is uh, everything right here is white and, and you know everything that was colorized. 
But uh, check this out. Uh, down here, I have a feature called Use Prominence Mask. So what this is going to do, this is automatically going to black out uh, the, the saturated areas, you know, the clipped areas. So we're only focusing on uh, this data right here. It's a lot easier on your eyes uh, doing it this way, um, but it's a pretty cool feature, this, this prominence mode feature. And we also have a blur effect. So this is just going to, uh, you know, uh, transition the, uh, you know, from the black to the uh, color image, um, you know, a little bit of a fainter uh, transition line right here. So next, I am going to uh, go to sharpening, and let me just crank this up to 30, see what kind of effect we get. And a little effect was done, so, and I think it's just because this is a higher resolution image. So let's go to a kernel size of three. Yeah, so now you can see this detail really starting to come out. I'm gonna crank up the sharpening boost just a little bit more. And I don't want to overdo it, but that's that's actually really good. So before sharpening and after. And remember too, you know, you can always use these masks. So let me just turn this on. And I don't, you, you, there's a little bit of a, uh, a Newton ring effect right here. So I definitely don't want that in my sharpening. So let me just bring my black point up, turn the mask off. And as you can see, this is the image that we have right here. And this is, you know, this is really cool. Uh, I, I, you know, I love this mode. So if you do want to just do nothing but prominence uh, imaging, you know, this is a way that you can do it and mask it out. And uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, you can try, like, I'll, I'll do this uh, as an example. I'll use the same settings on here, but if you want to use histogram equalization, you know, you, you can. I mean, it, it did bring out some some detail here, and uh, but this is what it looks like uh, with it on and with it off. So it, it all depends on, on your taste and how much you want to push the data. Uh, for right here, I'm going to keep it off. Now, I do want to show you this one thing because I mentioned it earlier in the video, is if I turn my mask off, you know, this is white. Now this brightness mode, this is like a uh, like a clipping mode and it's just for color clipping. So if I bring this down to like say uh, point, I don't know, nine, three, what this is gonna do, it's just going to start colorizing uh, this data here. So it's, you know, you, you can give it like, uh, even though it's clipped data, you can kind of give it like a yellowish color uh, you could just you, you could play around with your colors uh, here as well. You can even save it as a different profile, but um, that's the whole purpose of this brightness feature here. To me, this is a little uh, hard on the eyes, and I always just use the prominence mask. So, uh, so that pretty much wraps up um, prominence mode and how that works. All right, guys. So this is like bonus footage because I I have to show you this. And in the event that you are into maybe planetary uh, imaging or uh, even uh, lunar, uh, I have to show you this uh, for the sharpening aspect. And you can actually use the contrast enhancement as well. Uh, but for the sake of this video and to really get this video to an end, uh, I want to show you this. So check this out. So this is an image of Jupiter that, that I shot, I don't know, like a couple of years ago. And uh, and this is just straight out of uh, Auto Stacker, you know, no processing done whatsoever. And all I'm going to do now, I'm not going to like colorize this because that would be really weird. I don't want to turn it yellow or whatever. But um, what I am going to do is I'm going to turn on the uh, real time preview because I want to show you uh, the sharpening. OK, so I'm going to turn the sharpening on. Now I'm going to go up to a value of let's say six on the kernel and I'm going to start increasing my sharpening go higher go higher go a little bit higher so the before and the after 
Uh, so you can actually use a sharpening, uh, you know, on some planetary images, and uh, it actually does a really good job. I'm going to crank up the kernel just a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the detail, but if we zoom in, you know, it's it's there. I mean, mind you, this is this image was uh, blurred quite a bit. Uh, but um, yeah, some of this uh, detail is coming out. So, I mean, you can kind of use it for, uh, you know, for planetary sharpening, just the, the sharpening point uh, or part. You, you know, I can play with the contrast settings, but I'm not going to. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show you the sharpening bit because uh, it's pretty cool. And like, here's another example. So let me close this down. So here's an image of the moon. And here's the image now. And uh, let me turn down the sharpening just a tad bit. But you can see the before and the after. And one thing that you're going to notice, let me just zoom in, is before, after. And you're going to see that there's there's no clipping. Uh, we're not blowing out the highlights. So if you like, if you try to do like um, you know, wavelet stacking and like Registacks or you know probably even in PixInsight, yeah, uh, you're I don't know. You've probably seen uh, images online where you know the image is just like blown out at the tips, uh, but but you don't get that. So there's absolutely no clipping whatsoever. But, um, I mean, the, the sharpening is actually really good. So if you wanted to use this sharpening for, like, you know, even uh, some of your lunar stuff or, or even some planetary uh, stuff, uh, you can. And, you know, uh, I wasn't going to do this, but, you know, like, if you wanted to... Now, this actually looks, you know, uh, pretty bad, but um, I'm going to turn this down. But, if it, you know, if you do want to add, you know, a little bit of uh, contrast to it, uh, you can. And uh, so anyways, that's a bonus feature I just wanted to show you because I thought it was cool. So uh, so just real fast, I'm going to show you an image of Saturn. So this is uh, before and this is after. Before, after. And if I wanted to increase the sharpness even more, you know, I can. If I needed to go up another kernel to sharpen it even further. You know, I can, but uh, that's what it looks like uh, if I were to turn on uh, some contact, uh, contrast. You know, it, you can see that it did bring out a little bit of contrast. Uh, settings are fairly low on this one. And you can actually see the moons actually starting to, to come out of this image. And uh, I mean, there's no stretching or anything. It's just uh, the way we're sharpening. Uh, but it, uh, it, you know, I don't know. I, th I think it's pretty cool. But anyways, I need to wrap this video up. Uh, again, thanks for everyone out there for watching this. Uh, hopefully this uh, script will help you with solar processing. Um, this is mainly just to help people process a solar image. Um, and uh, anyways, I, I think that's it. So uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you later.